everyone, I'm Susan Handy. I'm a professor at the University of California at Davis, and I'm also the director of our National Center for Sustainable Transportation, which is housed at the Institute of Transportation Studies here at Davis. So I'm going to talk about accessibility versus mobility today. And you might be thinking, accessibility, mobility, what's the difference? And in fact, these two terms do get used uh, together a lot of the time. You'll see this in various sorts of planning documents. Um, and sometimes they get used interchangeably. People don't really make a clear distinction between these. Um, if you Google the difference between accessibility and mobility, you'll get hundreds of thousands of hits. But in fact, there is a really important difference between the two, and that's what I want to talk about today. So one of the early uh, definitions, the one that um, people often cite, is from Hansen from 1959. And he put out the idea that accessibility is the potential for interaction, whereas mobility is the potential for movement. And now you're probably thinking, huh, what does that mean? So let me tell you how I think about it. So good mobility is an ability to move around. Poor mobility is an inability to move around. In contrast, good accessibility is an ability to get what you need. You have destinations close by. You have a choice of destinations. You also have a choice of modes. Poor accessibility means an inability to get what you need. Destinations are far away. You have no destination choices. You have no mo mode choices. So of course, these things are related in that good mobility usually contributes to good accessibility. But you can have good accessibility with poor mobility, which is often the case in very congested urban areas where it's hard to move around, but you're very close to your destinations, and you have a lot of choices about modes. And you can also have poor accessibility with good mobility, which is often the case in rural areas where it's very easy to move around, but destinations are far away. And you may be entirely lacking some of the uh, destinations uh, you'd like to have. So just a little more about accessibility. It really has two components, and it's important to keep this in mind. I'll come back to this at the end. Accessibility is a function, first, of proximity to destinations. How close are you? to those destinations you want to get to. Uh, but it's also a function of what we call connectivity, or the connections to destinations. So how directly does the transportation system link you to destinations? And it's those two things together, proximity along with connectivity, that determine your overall accessibility, the ease with which you can get to the places you need to go. Now, why is this so important? Well, it makes a big difference if we plan for accessibility versus if we plan for mobility. So let me explain that a little bit. Uh, if we're planning for mobility, what we're doing is focusing on this idea of level of service, which is a measure we use in the transportation field that reflects levels of congestion and the amount of delay uh, that drivers experience. If we're planning for mobility, we tend to be giving priority to vehicles. We're focusing on making it easier to drive. And that's a problem, because if we plan for mobility, if we make it easier to drive, then what are we going to do? We're going to increase the amount of driving. As driving gets easier, people are going to do it more. If we increase the amount of driving, uh, we increase the levels of congestion, which means that we're reducing mobility. We're making it harder to move around. And as levels of congestion go up and mobility goes down, then we have pressure to build more roads, which would, again, increase mobility. So we get a vicious cycle that we never uh, get out of. Uh, the problem in the U.S. is that our planning has focused on connectivity but not proximity, so our accessibility is mobility dependent. We are dependent on being able to move around easily to get to the destinations we need to get to. Our planning is priori prioritized cars uh, and car connectivity, so our mobility is car dependent. And when traffic increases, mobility declines. And when mobility declines, accessibility declines. So if we instead plan for accessibility, it's really a different way to think about the transportation uh, system and 
and the kinds of decisions we should be making about the transportation system. So planning for accessibility means focusing on livability, it means giving priority to people, and it means focusing on making it easier to not have to drive so much. And if we do that, we get a different kind of cycle. Planning for accessibility means reducing the need for driving, which also means reducing the need for roads. Now, this does not necessarily mean that people end up driving less, uh, and thus reducing levels of congestion, but it makes it possible to drive less. And so it leaves open that possibility that we can get out of that vicious mobility cycle. And we end up with a happy cyclist. So what does it mean to plan for accessibility? Well, remember that accessibility is determined by proximity and connectivity. So there are two pieces to this. One is to work on proximity, which means mixing our land uses and doing so at some reasonable amount of density. It also means thinking about network connectivity and building in the important connections in the network that will reduce the distances uh, between home and the various destinations we need to get to. And if you do both of these things, you end up with shorter distances to destinations. This is an idea that the Europeans have embraced, and I'm not going to say this right, but here it goes, Stadt De Kurzenwege uh, is the German word for a city of short distances. And really what that means is a city with very good accessibility. Um, this is also an idea that Lewis Mumford, the famous urban historian, recognized over 60 years ago when he talked about why should anyone have to take uh, a car and drive a couple of miles to get a package of cigarettes and a loaf of bread. If we have a, a city of short distances, you no longer your, need your car um, to get the basic things that you need. And all of this is important because then it creates the possibility of um, using transit, biking, walking to get around. You are less dependent on your car. And in fact, some of our own research shows that neighborhoods um, that are built according to these principles, which tend to be the uh, pre-World War II older neighborhoods that we have in this country, uh, the people living in those neighborhoods actually do drive quite a bit less um, than people living in the more conventional kind of suburban areas that are much more dependent on the car. And of course that's important because of the kinds of environmental and economic and social and public health uh, impacts that all of our driving uh, has. All right, so what does good accessibility look like? How do we achieve that? Well, if you've been to Europe, you know what it looks like because they do this very well. But there are examples in the US um, where you can find good accessibility and sometimes it's not quite so obvious, but it's there. And I'm lucky enough to live in one of those cities um, that I would say has good accessibility, Davis, California. If you haven't been there, it's located about halfway between San Francisco and Lake Tahoe, just out of, outside of Sacramento uh, in Northern California. Uh, what makes Davis special is a whole bunch of different things, um, most of which are the, the outcome of explicit policies. So the city has had a, a very strong growth management program, which has uh, kept the city compact and it has very sharp edges and things are pretty close together. There was also a conscious effort to make sure that every neighborhood in the city has its own little shopping area so that you're within maybe not walking distance but at least biking distance uh, of a grocery store, for example. And then um, also lots of effort to make sure that the downtown area remains as the core uh, of the community at the, the center of town. So lots of activity in the center. Uh, the city has invested in lots of bicycle infrastructure. It's home to the very first bike lane in the US, in fact. And at this point has over 50 miles of on-road bike lanes, 50 miles of off-road bike paths, many um, bridges and tunnels to separate bike traffic um, from car traffic. And in general, very good bike connectivity, in fact, better bike connectivity than driving connectivity. Um, there have been some really strategic moves that the city has made. On your left is a cut through that was created when uh, a house at the end of a street came up for sale 
the city bought the house, removed the house, and created this cut through that's really important for kids biking to uh, one of the elementary schools as well as to a junior high school and the high school. On the right is a, a bridge that was put over one of the major arterials in town that links an entire neighborhood to its elementary school and allows kids to bicycle to school uh, with crossing just one or two very small residential streets. So these were very small projects that made a huge difference to the connectivity in the community. And as a result, not surprisingly, Davis has the highest uh, bike mode share of uh, any city in the country. So some lessons from Davis. Land use planning is as important as transportation planning. It was not just about the bi bicycle infrastructure. It was also those policies that kept the city compact and ensured that we had activity centers in each of the neighborhoods. Um, I think another important lesson is that the focus on accessibility can be more implicit than explicit. Davis wasn't necessarily talking about accessibility when it did all this stuff, uh, but that was the outcome, that it really enhanced the accessibility in the community. And I would also just add that um, overcoming the traditional mobility focus that we've had in the U.S. Uh, is not so easy, uh, even in a place like Davis, and you can see that in the Im images that we have here, we still have plenty of infrastructure in the city that's very much geared towards cars and works against um, you know, any efforts to promote more bicycling. So there's always more that we can be doing. So how do we do it uh, in the end? Well, remember again that accessibility is a function of both proximity and connectivity. That means that we've got to think about accessibility when we do land use planning, uh, as well as when we do transportation planning. It really takes both of those components. One of the challenges is that um, these two functions have tended to be separate, um, not only within local government, but also that uh, a lot of our important transportation planning is happening at the regional level, whereas we're doing land use planning at the local level. So it's an ongoing challenge to do a better job of coordinating all of that planning. And if we can do that, that will help towards this goal of planning for accessibility. Uh, there are other sort of technical challenges I won't get too much into here, but I think one of the challenges is just helping everyone understand what this concept of accessibility is. It is a multidimensional sort of thing, so there are you know, a lot of factors to consider if you're trying to measure it. Um, you can have very simple measures um, that maybe don't capture everything or very complicated measures that are harder for people to understand. What's the right way to measure this and track how we're doing towards an accessibility goal? Um, there's a lot of black box planning that goes on, our forecasting tools, for example, that, you know, again, it's sort of hard for the public to understand what's going on. Um, and then we've got to overcome the very entrenched traditional ways we've been doing transportation and even land use planning in this country. So let me just end by saying that, you know, really the, um, the important thing is that we stay focused on accessibility as the purpose of transportation. Again, turning to Lewis Mumford, he said this very nicely many decades ago, what is transportation for? The purpose of transportation is to bring people and goods to places where they are needed. That's what accessibility is all about. And as he reminds us, transportation, I blush to um, utter a truism now so frequently ignored, is a means and not the end. So let's think about how we can make decisions about transportation that further this goal of accessibility. Thanks. With that, I will wrap up and contact me if you have any questions. Thanks.